Welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I am a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. With this video, I wanted to kind of come back again to transit timing variations. And there's lots of different reasons as to why the transit time of a transiting exoplanet can vary. The time between each one is not always the same. And this video, I wanted to cover a two planet system. And this time, the planets are not interacting. They are negligible planet planet interactions, but you can still increase and decrease the time between each transit by the way that the actual star is moving due to the fact that you've got planets in the system or more than one planet. So if you've got a single planet, just to recap really on transits, if you've got a single planet and it passes in front of the star as we look at it, we'll get a dip in the brightness. So it blocks out some of the light, we get a dip. And it's a fairly straightforward mechanism or process or method, I should say, of discovering exoplanets. You can get the size of the planet from that by how much light is blocked out. Now, if it's a single planet, we would expect that each time it goes in front of the star, the time between each transit would be the same. Um, but that's not always the case. You can have multiple planets in the system which can alter when they occur. There's various different reasons as to why that can change. But this is an example here. Each transit is not at the same time. Sometimes they're early, sometimes they're late. So in this particular situation, we've got two planets. We've got two planets that are orbiting a star. Then right in the center of that, you've got the barycenter. And the barycenter is the center of mass of the system. And the star will orbit that as well as the planets, which is important to note, actually, for this particular method or this reason why these transits will change. So in this scenario, we've got a star. We've then got two planets. And if the transiting planet is the outer of the two planet system, then we can observe a change in the transit timing. OK, so why does that occur? Well, it's also worth noting just before we do that, that this actually is excluding planet planet perturbation. So we're ignoring any interaction between planets and you still get this effect here. So I did a separate video where we looked at the planet planet perturbations as they pass by one another, how they can actually change the transit timing. But if we ignore all of that, you can still have a similar effect just by how the star is going to move around that barrier center in this two planet system. So. If we've got a barycenter, which is the red, we've got the star. And the star is not stationary in the middle of the system. It's orbiting the common center of mass or the barycenter. And because of that, it can cause the transit to appear slightly earlier than it should do or slightly later than we would expect it to. So if we then look at the, the perfectly aligned setup. So in this case here, both of our planets are aligned line of sight then our transit is when we expect it to be. The, we don't expect it to be early or late. Our transit would be at the time we expect. Now, if the star is on the side of the planet or is on the side where the planet will transit like this here, so we're looking kind of from the bottom up down that kind of green area there, that's where it's going to be transiting across, it's going to appear early. So the star is orbiting around the barycenter and it's over towards the left, which is the same side that the transiting exoplanet is going to pass across. In this case here, it's going to give you a slightly early transit. Why is that? Well, the star is actually moving around in the opposite direction to the planet that's going to transit. So they're actually moving closer together. Because of that, the transit occurs early. The planet doesn't need to travel as far around in its orbit. It actually has its transit slightly early on its orbit because the star is a little bit further over. So it doesn't have to go all the way around. It doesn't have to do a full orbit to get a transit. So this, in this scenario here, it's slightly early. On the other side, so when the star is on the opposite side, uh, along with the actual planet, this time here, the star is moving kind of in the same direction uh, that the planet will have the transit. So they're kind of moving together, which means that the planet has to go around slightly further this time around. So because the, the star is going around that way, the planet is also going that way. 
the transit occurs slightly further along on the planet's orbit. It causes it to appear late, basically. So as the star moves in the planet's transit direction, the planet needs to orbit slightly further. You get a slightly later transit. So that's basically the uh, situation for negligible planet planet perturbation transit t uh, timing variations so thank you for watching and if you have any ideas for future videos then do let me know in the comments